Love that he's sick. But look how clean it looks. It looks so real. Yeah, eat lads. Good morning, everybody. I'm standing in my garden and I don't really know why I'm trying to get out the sunlight, but we've got a mod today. I finally a mod. Oh my god, a mod. We've got the biggest beanie ball you can find in the woman's section of Primark. We've got that beanie on. Uh, we've got our sh our socks tucked into our joggers, our odd socks tucked into our joggers, and we've got multiple jumpers on, which means it's going to be a mod. Uh, and we're going to be sitting in the car, and it means it's going to be a December mod. Actually, no, it's January. It's going to be a January mod, and it's a lot colder than I thought, but it's a mod. And it's an electrical mod, so it's not even like we're going to be getting that dirty. And we're going to be running around getting some friction heat for the muscles. We're not even going to be doing that. We've got a boost gauge here. I'm going to cut to the point. We've got a boost gauge here. Right. And this install, you would have never seen it before. Actually, that's a lie. It's the YouTube comment section, so you would have all seen it before. But I've never seen it before, and it's going to be awesome. Actually, that's a lie as well. I have seen it before, but I've seen it on one Evo in person and one Evo on the internet, and that is it. I've never seen it on any other car ever. But obviously, the YouTube comment section, so you would have all seen it before. I'm not actually going to tell you where I'm going to put it. Actually, you probably already know. Okay, it's in the title of the thumbnail. We're gonna crack on, basically. If I give you the keys this can, I said find that boost gauge, you would never, ever, 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 ever find it, unless you put the ignition on. So, where do you think it's gonna be? I said it on Instagram Live last night, everyone was like, oh, it's gonna be in the, who's that drink? That must be Jesse's. Oh, cheers, Jesse lad, I just cleaned that. Oh, you bastard. Everyone was like, oh, it's gonna be in the cup holder, it's gonna be under here. Nope, it's in plain sight. It's all the time until you turn the key on. Does that make sense? I'm not entirely sure how you've done it. There's no videos on how you do this either. I'm going to have to kind of just wing it. I kind of got an idea for some of the guys in the Evolution page, but I was going to just wing it. First of all, we need to pull this radio out. Right, so we need to pull this off. Let's get this off. Oh my god, it's cold. My hands are absolutely freezing. Oh my god, this is not going to be fun. And it's electrical as well, so I'm going to have to deal with copper wires. Oh, chewies. I don't mind if I do. Mm. Okay, take them RCAs out for the sub. Ugh, no strength in the cold. Ugh. Yeah. Right, radio out the way. Okay, fuck it, I'm gonna tell you. This is the clock, and it's the digital clock, okay? We're gonna put the boost gauge in there instead of the digital clock. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get this boost gauge, and we're gonna fully take it apart so you can just see the motherboard. Just see the digits and, the, and the, the motherboard and like the digital thing. And we're gonna put it where the clock is. So instead of saying like 1543, it'll say the boost and it'll go up and down. And it's gonna be nuts. So I've took these two screws off and it looks like this whole blue plastic bit is just popped in. Now I've just popped this one out there, the middle one, and they're all starting to come. So I just think you need to be a little bit pers persuasing, persuade, persuasing, persuade, yeah, you know what I mean. But it's just difficult because it's plastic and I just don't want to break anything. Something just flew off. What was that? I don't know what it was. Really, you know, I really need like a plastic bojo tool to not to scratch anything, but I've not got one, so screwdrivers are where it's at. There we go, so it's coming there. There we go. Because I had to pull the bolts off around the, uh, the, the, the clock surround or the dial surround. Here it is. So let's have a look at the back of this. Now we need to get out the clock. It looks like it's just... Uh, pressed on there and there. Okay, so there, this is the clock itself. Now, it's literally just held in by four tabs, so I've just pried these four tabs out the way. I've just got one more to go to now. Just this little one. So once some four tabs are out, that should pull out. Now, that is the clock. I think we're just going to be gluing the other one to there. So, obviously, when you look through... Oh, I've just lost our buttons, I need to go and pick them up. Hang on. So that's where the clock would sit through there, through that little smoked out thing. That's where the clock would sit. Now, we need to take apart a boost gauge. So this is a boost gauge. I'll link it to where I got it from on eBay. It's uh, it's only a little one. I can't remember the millimeter, but it's only a small one. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, we need to take that apart. So what we're going to do is... First of all, we're going to spin this head off, and there should be a spring in there. So we're going to just move them out of the way for the time being. And then, the, this is the sensor for the actual boost itself. So we're going to unplug that and just pull that away. Now we need to undo these two screws at the end. Try not to touch that. Try really not to touch that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to screw that back on actually, just because I don't really want to be touching. Try not to touch that, just because you don't want the grease in the hands, for, uh, the grease from your fingers getting on it. So we're going to undo these two here. Do these two little screws. 
But I'm just going to undo all these wires first of all. Okay, cool. I'm just going to pull. Obviously, just pull the end of this wire all the way through the end of the boost gauge. Take off the end. Pull that through. Again, try not to touch the uh, the motherboard and the and the digit and the digi things on there, because you don't want your grease the grease on your hands touching them. Okay, so that's actually the boost gauge around gone. So this is what we need. Now all we're going to be doing, really, is very simply that's where the clock goes, and we're going to literally simply just put that in there. We're going to have to Dremel this the the see the curves. So the curves here, we're going to, have to Dremel them flat. So it sits nicely in between there. So we're going to have to Dremel that bit flat and Dremel the bottom bit flat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slip it in inside there and basically just glue the top and glue the bottom. Try and get it central and try and get it straight as well. Okay, so to cut this down, I've actually went to Euro Car Parts and got this like little mini mini drill Dremel set. I think it was like £10, £13 or something. And you get loads of attachments in there. So the plan is, I've got this plugged in. You need to be very careful because if I take too much off, then I'm going to have to order a new boost case. So I'm going to have to go a tiny bit at a time, Dremel them, bits, them two bits flat. Now there's a little bit of an indent here, which I may have to Dremel off. See the little indent literally just there, which is causing that not to be flat. You can probably just see there. I'm probably going to Dremel that down and then it provides a flat surface then for that to glue to. Uh, I've just been speaking to Darren, he's a guy at the Evo page who's done it. He's saying, keep that little indent there and just Dremel an indent into the boost gauge and that way it'll keep it straight and it'll stop it wobbling about which is a really good idea yes yeah, so i'm just going to go a tiny bit at a time and just just making sure it's flat no a little bit more literally not that much more but just a little bit more So the last thing to do really is just put an indent with a cutoff wheel and then we're pretty much done I think. I think we're pretty much all sized up. Flat top, well flattish top. Probably just need to tape this side down a little bit more. Flat bottom, indent on the bottom and it should fit straight in now. That's slotted pretty much straight in. Let's just find that again. But sit just like that. So I'm gonna lay it up with glue now, push it all the way down, and it's sitting just like that. Hopefully that is straight on the other side. Let's pick it up and have a look. So we have a look at that now. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but that is pretty much bang on. So we're just gonna get some glue in, glue it down. We've got our best friend Gorilla Glue for that. Gorilla Glue is the best thing in the world, literally. Big, good, decent layer on this side. Same to the other side, try and be careful. Right, slide it in. Okay, so I've got the glue over here drying. It's drying quite nice. I probably could have got away with not cutting as much off because I've had to basically put two big blobs of glue just on top of each side just to basically glue it to the side because it was a little bit loose. But it should be okay. Hopefully you can't see all the glue underneath when it's smoked out. Hopefully not, but for the first time it's not too bad. So I'm going to let that dry for like five, five minutes or so. The last thing I want is literally that just pulls it straight off as soon as I try and cut some wires onto it. Right, get back outside. Here's a f so first of all we're going to get this wired up. So it's basically, this is like a standard boost case. So you've got, you need power for that, a ground for this. And then that goes to the sensor, which is this. Similar sort of thing, so the white will connect up with the green there, and obviously this sensor needs uh, live and a ground as well. So what you can do is you can usually just tie them up two together, tie the, tie the red and red together, black, black and black together, basically just tie all the whites together, and then just lengthen the ground and lengthen the <clears throat> positive, depending on where you're putting it. Cut the vacuum line going to the turbo timer, T-piece it, T-piece it off to this sensor and then just obviously just wire up the sensor behind there somewhere and obviously just use the same positive which i'm going to use the remote off the radio and the ground which is any of those bolts on there around that metal that'll be good as a ground as well and then pretty much done there to be fair with you 
Now I've actually lost my crimper which is really annoying so I'm going to have to just cut the wires of the pair of snit. Just do the old tape round with some electrical tape. I'm going to have to just do that for now. Now for the positive, uh, this is the remote coming from the radio. I've just untied it because that's going from the remote to the sub. So that is going to power the boost gauge. Okay so I've actually located everything there. There's a spare boost cable down there. Uh, so we actually don't need this space here now so we can actually start putting stuff back in. That's good. Let's put a wire line first. So let's tie them two together. Okay, good. So the two positives are together. Uh, and then we're going to put the remote on to them. Okay, so all them have got power now. Okay, which is good. So we're going to tape them up. I've not got any crimp because I've not found my crimper, but when I find my crimper, I'll do that properly, but I probably won't because I can't avoid taking it all off again. Okay, so the actual boost gauge itself has got power. No, it's not because I've not got the radio in, so I need to put the radio in. Okay, so now the boost gauge has got power underground, uh, as long as the radio comes on. So we're going to turn the ignition on, and that boost gauge should light up. Now, I'm not sure how it works. It should just read nothing because I know it's not got a sensor in. Well, let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, it is working. Okay. It, it's just because the radio wasn't on properly. Okay, so the boost gauge is there. like that. How sick does that look? <laughs> so, obviously, on my one, it's not reading any boost at the minute. Lads, that is sick. Man. Look how clean it looks. It looks so real. <laughs> right, let's turn the radio back out. Plug up the boost gauge. And let's go for a spin and see what it's like when it's driving. But, oh, my God. Yeah, buddy. Let me tell you. Let me fucking hear you. Okay, I've had to lengthen a couple of wires, uh, and I've actually used crimps. I found that this is actually crimping them pretty well, so I'm just using the crimps with them instead. So I've crimped that and then taped it just in case. <coughs> so I've lengthened that positive wire now. I'll probably just still keep the ground up there, but because I weren't getting enough clearance, so I have to, I have to le lengthen the positive wire, uh, and we should be good. Okay, so all the power cables in, I've extended that wire, all the power's working, the boost gauge is turning on. All we've got to do now is just hook up the boost. So the sensor is here. Uh, this it comes with one of these wires. I'll use these for now. These are okay uh, I wouldn't recommend using these really under the engine bay because the engine bay gets hot uh, And then these and oh it gets cold and hot all the time and this this kind of like it's kind of like plastic so Use them under the engine bay. They'll get really soft and really hard constantly and they do usually like burn or snap So I wouldn't really use these outside the engine bay, but they're okay inside. So I'm just gonna feed it through here uh, cut that vacuum line go into uh, well between the turbo timer and the intake manifold and we're going to bang in this little T piece but I bet I've lost it because of course I need it now so I've lost it that vacuum line is a lot thinner uh, so I'm going to have to just match up the T piece to that and see if it should fit but it should fit I can't see why it wouldn't but let's find this bloody T piece right I don't think I can use uh, the, boot, the vacuum line inside the car because this is the other end of the vacuum line and it's uh, it, it's not going over this T piece uh, so I think I'm going to have to just put that back where I found it which was there and send another vacuum line inside the car inside the car just hope I've got enough vacuum line okay so we got that T piece uh, off the engine bay there uh, another T piece now I've got loads of different vacuum lines loads of different sizes but not that many adapters so I'm gonna have to be pretty picky of which adapter I use and where uh, some of the wires will go over that one but like some aren't long enough so this black one would be perfect because it actually slots easy over Easily over this one, um, but I'm just not sure if it's going to be long enough. So what I'm going to do is we've got the trusted coat hanger. Uh, we're going to push the coat hanger through, uh, tie a vacuum line to it, pull it out, and see how much room we've got on the other side. I really want to use that black one because it's black. I don't really want to be mixing colours because this is red. <coughs> I don't really want to be doing that again. Uh, but end of the day, I want the BK to be working. So hopefully that black one will be long enough. So we're going to push this through here, tie it through, pull it back. Okay, so with a series of vacuum lines down there, so I've got, I had to use that red one, unfortunately. Uh, that was the only one which fit. But let's see if it's actually getting a boost reading now. <sighs> it's so cold, guys. Obviously, I'm going to tidy all that up in a minute. So I've got the cream wire going to the red wire and the red wire going into the, uh, <coughs> and one of the solenoids at the front. Okay, so the boost gauge is there. All right, so it's reading 0.1. Let's start the engine. I've got bloody immobilizers, man. <laughs> Canelli, 
Sort yourself out, man. Got it in gear from before. Right, so we are getting a boost reading. Now they are showing different readings, so this is saying minus 0.6. Basically, just take it for a spin and see which one is uh, thinking first. Because that one might actually be wrong. We're keen to see which one's actually more effective. Uh, the one going through the electric or the one going pretty much straight just through the vacuum. But let's tidy these wires up and we'll see. Right, we're going to take for a quick spin, make sure it's boosting fine. I've just left the vacuum lines uh, loose down there, so I've got to be quite careful to be honest. So I've had the car warming up for about five minutes and oh my god, it's nice in here. It's been so cold. So goddamn cold. Right, we're gonna do a pull here for the third. I'll keep you keep an eye on that, guys. I'll keep an eye on the uh... 1.6. I think this is off because that stays at 1.6 all the way through, and this one drops off and doesn't have a fucking clue what it's doing. Let's keep an eye on that. both reading them pretty much just the same they both go to not 1.6 bar 1.7 and then drop off to about 1.4 which is what we want from the map really but uh, it's just really difficult to keep an eye on them both really 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 difficult I'll try and keep, I'll do, keep doing a few pulls though but look how good it looks lads it looks so clean it looks like it's meant to be there so good it is working but sometimes it like the light turns off like so I think there might be a ground issue somewhere because the light does just, it just turns off when I'm full booting it, it'll go off the line and like come back and there probably is a ground issue. Okay, so I've just been to Halfords because I needed to get a new quarter inch ratchet. I've tidied up everything under there, I've cut off a load of excess uh, vacuum line which we did not need, so that's all tied up, it's all cable tied. I've redone the ground because I'm guessing that might have been the issue and I've tied that up so it's not dangling anymore, so I'm guessing what might have been happening before is when I've been put, putting my foot down, that's just been dangling, it's just been moving the ground about, and it's just been knocking it off. Hopefully that doesn't happen on the way home, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, so we're gonna roll in from third, that's when it would, that's when it would usually do it, let's see. Why does it beat like that? I don't know why it does that, it's weird. I can't see it being a positive or a ground issue just because it, it would do, if it was like that it wouldn't do it at a certain boost. It always does it around about 1.5, 1.6 bar. Now that is when my peak boost is, so I'm listening it's flash me telling me I'm at peak boost. I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna message the company anyway and just say, yo, look, I've installed this boost gauge, boost gauge, and for some reason it's flickering on and off at a certain PSI. Can you please tell me why? It looks good, lads. It looks good. Okay, so as I'm here getting a thumbnail for the video, I actually did a test earlier on today using a foot pump and a battery to make sure that what I have installed is completely correct and that the flashing is normal. Uh, that was turned out to be true. I did the test. The test turned out to be successful. Uh, and uh, so I have messaged the company and they have told me that... <clears throat> That's completely normal, saying that there is a built-in warning flash, so anything of 1.5 bar to 2 bar, it will just flash, and that, that's a built-in warning. Uh, this actual gauge, I've done it consistently. When I did it on a on a on a, on the on the test, where 1.5 bar, it, it would flash consistently like this. So for this gauge, maybe there's something the wrong one, but for this gauge, there is a built-in warning of 1.5 bar, which is a little bit annoying because it only flashes really quickly like that, so you can see what boost you're at, but it's just a little bit annoying. But everything's fine with, with everything is fine with the connections, everything is fine with the vacuum, everything's completely fine, that's completely normal. If you do want to see a video on how I actually did that test, how I fully did that test to make sure everything was working, how I tested out all the connections, now I tested out all the vacuum to make sure everything was fine. I, I have put that video up on Patreon so that video will be on Patreon. But for now guys, it is the coolest boost gauge ever. As I said, I've only ever seen this in about two cars. Uh, it's uh, people who've seen it on like Facebook and stuff at the minute have said it's so sick and they want one but unfortunately you can't buy it you have to make it uh, but look at it guys it just looks so good it looks like it's meant to be there I'm so happy with it and I can't wait to impress passengers like, what the hell's that it's a boost gauge in the clock well thanks for watching lads I love you all and I'll see you next time